Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to VUX World, the Practical Voice Podcast, where this week we are speaking all about the Enterprise Voice Assistant, Uma. Uma is an enterprise voice assistant, as I said, created by Stephen Milner, who is the CEO at Amy Systems, and Marcus Finley, who is the CTO at Amy Systems. And we're going to be talking today all about voice in the enterprise. We're going to advance on some of the stuff that we were discussing with Sean Conungo of Silver a few weeks back, and we're going to be getting into some real detail about Uma, what Uma is, how it works, what the use cases are, and why voice can and will revolutionise the enterprise. Uma will be launched this week at Madfest. If you don't know about Madfest, go to madfestlondon.com. It is a conference. It's on for, I think it's on for about three days. Is it on for three days? Yeah, 28th to the 29th of November, three days. And on the Wednesday, on the 28th, Amy Systems and Stephen and Marcus, they're going to be launching Uma. Uh, there's a whole host of interesting speakers there. Katie Piper is speaking. Uh, I don't know if you know Katie Piper. She's a broadcaster and author. You've probably seen her on TV. I think she's got a podcast that's doing really, really well. So she's going to be talking there. Uh, there's people there from Disney, uh, Hawaii. I, I want to say, was it, was it Huawei, the phone brand? I keep getting the name wrong. Domino's, there's people from Domino's, BT, uh, Snapchat, Moonpig, Uber, you know, the the technology industry's primary innovators are going to be there talking about innovation, talking about bringing big ideas to life, talking about tackling the problems with GDPR and transparency and, you know, talking about the art of what's possible. Big, it's, it's all of the dreamers and disruptors and doers and opportunists that exist in the technology space are all going to be there and they're all going to be sharing their thoughts with you. If you want to go to Madfest for free, the tickets are worth about 600 quid each, by the way. If you want to go for free and see the launch of Uma and get to play around with Uma, then all you need to do is DM me on Twitter at VUX World or at Kane Sims. Or you can get in touch with Stephen Mil- Milner. Uh, they are at uh, Amy Systems on Twitter. A-M-M-I Systems. Uh, just drop us a direct message and you could win some tickets to Madfest. They're worth about 600 quid. It's really worth getting involved because it's going to be absolutely fantastic. You you really do want to get there. So drop us a line on Twitter. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be, today we're going to be talking all about uh, Uma, all about Enterprise Voice. And Dustin couldn't make it today. He is uh, in, in uh, San Francisco. You know there's been some fires over there and stuff like that. So he's, he's found it challenging getting a flight out of there. Um, so hopefully everything's going okay wishing you the best and hopefully you can get back safely um so no dust in today it's just me with steven and marcus talking about uma and amy systems on vux world Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please welcome Stephen Milner and Marcus Finley to the podcast. Guys, say hello. Hi there. Hi there. You all right? Very, very well. How are you? Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Um, it's been a uh, a good start to the week so far. So yeah, really good. We're good. And what about you, Marcus? How's things? Great, great. Ready to dig in deep in here and get excited talking about voice and and what's what's really going on here in enterprise yeah we've we've done we did an episode with uh sean canungo which touched on on digital transformation and stuff like that but and that was more around kind of working with clients within the sort of b2b space but you guys over there at amy have been actually building a voice assistant of your own i believe that's correct, yeah. Um, so we um, we started out about two years ago, again, looking at uh, how we could actually bring voice to the enterprise. Um, we um, was sort of, I come from a collaboration technology background uh, where we built uh, meeting spaces and collaboration spaces for, for enterprise organizations. And um, we kind of had a, a moment one day where we thought, you know what, what why can't we bring voice to 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 enterprise, why can't we do what we do at home um, with our um, with our Alexas, our series, our Cortanas, and actually bring that into an enterprise space and ask meeting rooms to do things for us, um, uh, to take notes for us. Uh, so we we set out on that journey to um, to um, to actually build our own uh, digital voice assistant, uh, but not just a, a bespoke one. It actually works with um, Cortana, Siri, uh, Amazon, Alexa, and, and and gives you everything that. Um, 
um, you know, gives us everything that the um, that the home um, voice platforms do. Mm. And let's we'll, we'll get into into the details of of this in just a moment. But first, let's. I wonder whether it would be easy for context for the listeners out there, maybe to you know tell us a little bit about yourself, Stephen. First of all, in terms of what you do at Amy, and then Marcus will do the same thing with you as well. And and just generally, kind of maybe as an overview of Amy would be good. Uh, and then you know what what you both do within Amy. Yeah, no problem. So as I say, I'm Stephen, I'm the CEO and I'm one of the uh, the founding partners of the business. So I, um, I actually look after everything from uh, channel strategy right the way through to sales and technical um, uh, as, as a CEO would do. Yeah, so uh, I'm CTO and in my role, I'm working with our development team in terms of developing the, implementing and developing the product roadmap and working with the full team and kind of aligning the vision and figuring out the future of kind of enterprise voice and assistance and uh, working to kind of take our big ideas and translating that into code. So it's uh, been an exciting journey. Nice. And Stephen, it's nice to have a northern accent on the podcast as well. Fantastic, yeah. It's um, bringing bringing uh, northern technologies home. I think <laughs> keeping it real. <laughs> <laughs> so you te- you mentioned in there that that you have kind of ventured and forayed into the uh, voice assistant space in the enterprise, and there's an event happening on Wednesday, Madfest, which you are going to make a rather special announcement. Do you want to share with us a little bit about what that entails? Yep, absolutely. So we're actually going to be launching UMA, our, uh, our, our digital enterprise assistance, uh, which is is focusing on uh, space booking, meeting room booking in the enterprise, um, and um, digital desk uh, booking, hot desking as well. So uh, we're going to be launching that on on Wednesday, uh, next Wednesday the twenty eighth. We've got a um, a few demos and a panel discussion, uh, which you're taking part in, I believe, as well, Ken. Indeed, indeed, yeah, yeah. We're going to be facilitating that, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I think that the the enterprise voice sort of space is extremely intriguing to me I've spent a lot of time doing you know what is what is termed digital transformations I would argue some of it has been tweaking rather than transforming in some cases which I think is quite common um but it's 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 refreshing to to meet the people who have actually not just been talking about it, but who have actually got to a point where you're now delivering something that will benefit the enterprise. I think that's it's really kind of I think you're in a really unique position. So what what kind of what Marcus, I'll, I'll turn to you. What kind of got you into into voice in the first place? Uh, it was just kind of natural. I think just looking at being in the technology business and looking at delivering transformations for businesses, it's inevitable that voice was something that we just saw further down the road. And so we started a few years ago down this path where a few hadn't and really trying to figure out it's going to happen. How do we deliver voice and assistance for companies in a way that feels natural and is secure and reliable uh, and that they feel comfortable delivering it and making it part of their business. And so we started a few years ago figuring out you know, what is that? How do we take existing services and bundle all these things together in a way that is natural and, is, and, and can be adopted? And so it was just kind of a natural fit of, you know, there's, there's a need and ask for it and people are trying to figure this out. And it's like, why, why don't we try to crack this nut and figure out how do we deploy these types of experiences? And so it's been a great journey so far. Mm. Stephen, what about you? What what kind of what turned your head about voice in the first place, and and why or where did the idea come from in terms of trying to use that within the enterprise? Yeah, it was um, it was pretty similar, really, but it was more about user interfaces and and sort of the evolution of that. I mentioned at the beginning there that that I actually um, was I've come from a collaboration background with video conferencing and and boardrooms and things like that. So it was kind of you know we went from a transition of uh, a remote control turning a, a a TV over or a source input to touch panels doing the same. It's kind of a natural progression for me that voice becomes the next phase of how we control those spaces. Um, so we were kind of like say. Sat 
that in a in a meeting room one day that just didn't work. We were having issues with it. We were having issues trying to book the space, and it was just a, a comment that came out of one of my team that said, "You know, wouldn't it be just great if we could tell this room to start the video call or to book the meeting space without us having to search through tons of um, meeting room calendars to find the right time and for it to work with you in a conversational flow?" So we see it as a as a next evolution, really, of user interface. Um, you know, you've gone from the remote to the touch panel to the voice and that that's where it came in for me and i think even just the idea of outside of it just transformations and assistance of it's it's kind of the new magical space that's you know opportunity to work in where websites and apps are cool but there's something that still feels magical or unique about asking a device to do something and it actually does something intelligent and so there's still some Oh, I wonder <laughs> that comes from the experience of voice that you really don't really get in any other aspects of technology right now. Especially when it understands a Northern accent as well. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about what a typical use case looks like with Uma then. How, how, how would a kind of, um, how would somebody in, in their daily routine use Uma? Um, yeah, so you might you might just sort of come away from your home. You know, you could say, say you, we're all used to saying, you know, what's my schedule looking like with your Alexa or your Google Home. But when you're in the office, you might be um, in an enterprise, have 20, 30 strong meeting rooms, maybe more. I mean, we've worked with enterprises that have got around 2,500 meeting rooms across the globe, um, certainly 20, 30 per site. Um, you might be, for instance, working away in the office and you need to have a, a meeting with a colleague and you want to book a meeting space, you can typically just turn around and say to him, you know, that, 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 that from a, from a start point, can you find me a meeting room that's available for four people um, for an hour? And then the conversation starts. And what, what, what Uma does then is it actually converses back and forth with you on finding the right space for you. Uh, so if you're going to go and walk into a boardroom with 20 seats and there's only two of you, you're not actually going to um, – it's not really good utilization for an organization to do that. So asking you a simple set of questions and talking with you about what you're trying to achieve from the meeting, find you the right space. And that interaction is all done via voice. And what, because I, I, I can see that being super helpful, especially some of the meeting room systems I've come across before. They, they are, uh, they are, you know, quite challenging sometimes. What makes voice unique or what makes voice a better user experience for, for this kind of stuff? I think it's device led. I mean, I don't know about you, Marcus, but when we were doing this, I was kind of looking at the fact that, you know, you don't have to be uh, with the, with the, with, with Uma at your desk, looking through calendars and, you know, sending emails out to everybody. You can actually just ask uh, for the space, you know, you can ask uh, for, for something to do. You, you can see that Alexa for business is due to sort of come out within the next, um, the next sort of six months in the U S um, you know, where they're thinking about how they can bring to the enterprise. So we were kind of saying, what, you know, you need to be anywhere in the organisation and find what you're trying to tr trying to do. I mean, I, I don't know, um, you know, how how you you work at currently, Ken, but it, it would be more along the lines of you. You know, it, it stops you from having to be sat at your desk. It stops you from cumbersome um, sort of looking through uh, calendars. And like I say, in the enterprise, there are a number of meeting spaces that people just use. And the, the advantage of it is its speed. And a lot of times you're you're looking to just quickly be able to get a meeting room quickly. And that's really the idea is speed and efficiency, uh, where you're you're busy enough in your day actually getting work done. I don't want to spend 30 minutes digging through Microsoft Office figuring out the right meeting room. Yeah. If the system can take and make my day a little bit more productive. Um, and then that's that's the value add of, you know. You know, those 15, 20 minutes a day for every employee that's off booking meeting rooms are now off doing productive things that can make, create real results and real productivity for the, the enterprise as a whole. And so that's where we see these little wins, even if it's something small as room booking, that just creates efficiency as a whole for a larger enterprise. So what made you think about room bookings in in the first instance then what what was it that made you know where where did the idea of room bookings come from 
that came from our, our audio visual background from our um, from a company that I'm I'm still involved with as a, as as a as a, a business owner there. It came from there really. We were kind of working with the market on um, meeting room booking systems that were quite complex. Uh, some of them were just interfaces that again still worked with you having to be near your computer, um, having to tap buttons to find and scroll, uh, having to install panels outside rooms that actually you know were quite cost um heavy on the the way that it was installed uh, so we kind of thought you know there's got to be like i say there's got to be an easy way to do it and and room bookings was the very first thing we we thought of um it, it actually starts and moves on from there so you, you've got room booking to hot desking to uh, meet taking notes in the meeting room as well so you know the, the uma listens into the meeting and actually will action point any of the sort of meeting notes so you can do follow-ups and then it's sort of it's almost like you've got an assistant taking notes for you at the end of it. So room booking was the very first part of what we wanted to try and achieve and, and how we could streamline that. But then just, I mean, we, we sat around a table for about three days, I think it was Marcus saying, wouldn't it be great if we could do this? We could do that, we could do this, we could add that, this would be fantastic. And it ended up going, well, actually, we can add any kind of enterprise uh, solution into this um, into this digital assistant and talk to it and get the answers that you want. But we really didn't want to confuse the message. We wanted to, you know, we wanted to go with a simple solution to start with and say, this is what we can help you with. Desk and room booking is 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 the key. Yeah, and it was just looking at where the pain points were and just the everyday experience of working inside an office environment. What drives people crazy? Where are they being frustrated about? You know, I need to book a meeting tomorrow and I have to spend an hour finding the right size for the meeting and I could have been doing something else. And so just really hearing from customers and enterprise where where these little small pain points turn into real frustrations for their their teams and how and deploying the right assistant for the right problem. And so the UMA book was kind of targeted to just address that pain point of I need a meeting now. I need a meeting for five of us. I don't want to spend my whole day doing that. What's let's create a solution that just immediates and reduces that friction and, and that pain point. And to scale, right? We wanted to scale. We wanted people to be able to have this uh, no matter what size you are. It wasn't just that it needed to be for enterprise, but we wanted to be able to scale per the amount of space that you needed to you needed to book and and it just we just wanted to make it really easy for you to talk to someone to get what you need instead of having to manually find it mm. almost it's almost like a well i suppose an assistant exactly what i was going to say a pa but that's exactly what it is isn't it it's an, it's an assistant that sits in the middle and, and does some does it on your behalf it absolutely is, yeah. That's what we're we're kind of seeing this as, and um, eventually we'll be adding other services into there, like you know, hotel booking, flight booking, um, and things like that. So we're we're seeing it it become that digital assistant, that true enterprise digital assistant um, that you bring to the workplace with you. And that was always the goal is that you're able to adapt it to your needs, and so I think that's the one area that stands out for what kind of makes us different is the ability to customize it to your enterprise of so this is the services that you use let's bundle that up into the uma engine that we've developed to you know get all your business services talking through a conversational experience and that's really kind of our secret sauce is to be able to take those services and make them talk to each other in a way that you know is easy for the end user which is your team and your your staff hmm. you mentioned there just then Stephen, around meeting note is that part of uma as well to be able to take meeting notes and, and pull out actions did you say it is yes so that's in our initial offering that you can actually um sit within a meeting and and um take notes uh, listen in uh, actions those actions are then recorded in our cloud and then at the end of the meeting you can kind of say you know uma we're going to wrap this meeting up now can you email all um invitees and because it's working with 0365 and google it kind of sees in the calendar who's in there uh, and will then send an email out with the kind of detailed notes i mean it's not it's not listening into absolutely everything uh, that you're doing but it, it will take salient points when you ask it to and then you know it could be that we want to f make a follow-up from today's call and we say you know hey can you uma can you make a um a follow-up meeting next tuesday for myself and kane to discuss x y and z and it would then send out those notes at the end with those those points in there um so we're, we're 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 kind of bringing it into the meeting room as well uh, once you're in there uh, and we've got a, a really long sort of uh, roadmap of products and services that we're going to add to that 
um, to that service as we go along. So it'll be, so is this use case right then? So you'd obviously use it to book the meeting in the first place. You'd turn up at the meeting and then you would have um, presumably some kind of access to Uma, whether it's on a mobile or, or smart speaker or wherever. Um, and you would then have to kind of invoke Uma whenever you want to register an action or something like that. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, just like you would today with Siri or Cortana, you want what you want to do is I really don't want to say Alexa because there's two in the building <laughs> behind me and it will end up just popping up on this call. But ultimately, you would you would say it and uh, and that's the the wake intent of Uma, which would then get you to to listen. So you're not actually you know starting the meeting and listening to absolutely everything and potentially getting my northern accent and you know when me and marcus have meetings you know we've got a, a really smooth east coast us accent with my northern yorkshire accent <laughs> we don't want it listening into all of that so we kind of say right it just the key salient points of the meeting let's just work it with uma can you take an action can you do this and and, and so forth so essentially it's uma almost has and almost like an end-to-end -end assistant then, isn't it? For for pre-meeting booking, during meeting taking actions, and then post-meeting circulating the actions. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, um, that's exactly the the use case that we're we're seeing this um, seeing this in. Hmm. What kind of um, Marcus? Maybe this might be one for you on the technical side. What what kind of challenges have you kind of come up against in terms of building this? Yeah, I think when you're thinking about challenges, there's a, a few when you're thinking about introducing voice and, and messaging within an enterprises. You know, one is every enterprise is different. And so developing a solution that can work across different configurations and different uh, IT department needs. And so really figuring out, you know, the, that was one of the biggest challenges for us up front is creating an architecture that allows us to uh, have a license, licensable product that allows you to, based upon your needs and services, to be able to use our engine for identifying intent and then associating that to the correct business services. Uh, that's where we spend a large bulk of our time is understanding how business work, how they configure their business services, and how to, be, to build our UMA engine to be able to connect those services, but also connect that to the appropriate intent. And then the last step is security as well as always important for all enterprises and how do we provide the security that enterprises need, but also provide the best user experience. And that's where the, the secret sauce and the rubber meets the road and kind of creating an experience like this is, yes, it's great voice works and it's awesome, but is it secure? Is my business still protected? Is our IP still protected? And so that's where we spend a lot of time ensuring that Uma works in that environment and everyone feels safe about it. Mm. So when you're saying that you need to figure out um, how businesses kind of manage different processes and, I, 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 and integrating with those, are you talking if essentially figuring out almost like what line of business systems they use to, to manage bookings in at the moment? Is that what you get out there? Yeah, there's that, um, you know, uh, but there's also how we design that conversation within the organization. So, you know, figuring out what they're using currently, um, you know, it's off the shelf. You can go out there and you can connect to a 365 and, you know, there's a typical set of things that Uma will do for you. But actually, when you start talking to organizations, you want to you want to design that that voice experience for them around how they want to use it. So um, that's what part of what our team and part of what Marcus's team does really in the, in the UX design phase. They'll go and they'll sit with the user experience teams there and they'll figure out how this this um, this voice is going to is going to help them. Um, and there may be certain ways that they want to talk to it, right? Because the certain different systems have different ways of interacting with them in a physical world for, through a through a laptop or a, a computer so they have to um they have to make it so that the interaction with voice is is as seamless as possible because the adoption of voice in in enterprise is still relatively low it's, it's getting better uh, but it's still relatively low yeah and there's like little things that you don't think about but every business has shorthands and acronyms for core things of their business. And so understanding Google or Alexa won't know that out the box of, you know, ABC means this particular project or a particular thing specific to the business. Those are the kind of things that understanding the business, their their workflow and how all those things work together play a big part in designing the right conversation 
uh, and the right flow for the assistant for their to create the best experience. So it's almost it sounds as though that every client that that uses Uma there's a there's a bit of bespoke work up front to be able to kind of like almost assess what they how how they specifically want to use it is that is that fair to say? Yeah, I think I think so. There's the there's the basic out of the box stuff that says right. These are the you know can I book a meeting room? They're all out of the box, but w- w- there is some element of bespoke onboarding that we we do with clients to get it just just right for them. So the voice experience isn't just sort of stopped at the very first hurdle within within the organisation. So there is a there is an onboarding process that we do with with people. Yes, so we get it right. And you mentioned there that that it can work with Office 365. Does that then mean that Uma uses something else to actually handle the booking itself? Or does Uma have almost like a a booking capability within it? How, how, How does it kind of sit within the architecture? Yeah, so all the transactions happen within the Uma engine. So we've developed a core for Uma that uh, once we deploy the Azure apps on a, a client's inter, uh, Azure environment, they're able to connect to the Uma engine to complete all the Office 365 intents and, and requests. And so all that's kind of managed through the, the, Uma, the Uma service. And so they're able to make those fulfillments and that also manages all the authentication for the enterprise through that. So because we're using Office 365, uh, we kind of OAuth, uh, the employees would kind of use their their own email address and password. They don't have to create anything new. They just use their existing, you know, login for their, their company and they have access to UMA. And that allows us to kind of identify their meeting calendar and to uh, make those associations and room bookings directly on their behalf. And when you say that they can access UMA, how exactly do you access Uma? What is it? Is it, a, is it an app? Is it some kind of desktop shortcut? Is it on a smart speaker? In what kind of mode does Uma take? Yeah, so right now we're able to deliver Uma through a n- native mobile application. So you're able to on the go have access to Uma through voice and text uh, through the mobile application, as well as being able to deliver Uma through third party messengers as uh, Slack, Cisco Teams, Microsoft Teams. Uh, as well as to deliver UMA through uh, devices like Google Home and Alexa and also the new um, features rolling out around text and actual phone calls. So we're expanding the amount of platforms that we can deliver voice through, um, through the uh, kind of connected through the UMA service. Yeah, I think we have a, a our own app. We have, like I say, the ability to integrate into, like Marcus was saying there, the, the third party applications. But one for us is is to really make it so it can integrate what you're using at home too. So we want you to be able to actually use uh, the Amazon Alexa. We want you to be able to pick up a phone and ring uh, Uma as well and, and actually speak to Uma down the phone. We want you to be able to text whatever's comfortable really for the user. Um, uh, as well as voice, we, we're, we're giving the option there for people to have that. And that forms part of the kind of that, that bit at the front where we talk to, to users about the best way that their team use um, uh, technology and how we can best bring that in. Because voice isn't always going to be in, you know, you're not always going to be in the right space to use voice. So, you know, if you're on the, the horrible tube in London, and sorry about this, but uh, you're not going to be able to speak, um, you know, to the to, to, to Uma uh, from the mobile device. So the best way to do that would either be text message or chat through a text element. Um, uh, so th- we, we kind of opened it up for, for multiple ways and, and bringing the home kind of devices into the world of business as well. Hmm. Yeah, it's interesting that. I think it's it definitely sounds to me, I mean, obviously I haven't seen seen the working example yet, but it definitely seems as though it's going to be far easier. As I said, I mentioned, I mentioned some of the meeting room systems that I've used in the past and it is, it's an absolute nightmare, you know. Um, so it does, it, does, it does sound as though it can definitely uh, definitely save people time and certainly if it's if it's going to be on, you know, a multitude of different devices, it's almost as if you, you've kind of t- taken the they got the um, the same approach we've, we've talked about on the podcast in the past in terms of not really caring about the interface having having the the interface is whatever i think it was uh, andreas Aulov mentioned that the interface is whatever the user has at the time 
Rather, it's the vehicle. It's yeah. the vehicle for for the, for the delivery of the service. Um, but we actually, you know, interestingly, we 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 did actually concentrate in the first six months. So we're, we're two years in. We actually thought that it was the vehicle that needed to be designed in the first instance, and we kind of took a big U-turn. So, well, actually, it's not. It's the engine in the middle that that lets the user do what's best to them. Um, and 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 we re re-engineered it to be the, the 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 engine, not the vehicle itself that that delivers it. Yeah, because it's not about the platform; it's about being able to understand the context of the request from the employee or staff member, but then to be able to know that hey, I want to book a meeting room, and that means Uma understanding that and and understanding that I need to connect the Office three sixty five. I need to check the meeting calendar. And once I check the meeting calendar, I book the room. And so that's where Uma's intelligence really kicks in and the ability to kind of translate into what business service is actually really required to fulfill that, uh, create a result based upon that. And then it's the learning element that we built in there as well. So we we're kind of saying, do you know what? The, you know, I can learn over time what my preferences are. So I don't need to necessarily go through a, a ton of um, questions with you because I know that you're in your Yorkshire office. I know that there's six meeting rooms there, and I know that over the last six months you've booked, you know, uh, the, the Calder, uh, which is one of the meeting rooms here. Um, uh, you know, 80% of the time and I can see that there are four people. So do you know what? Instead of going through all of those in intents and the questions back and forth, I'm just going to say, do you know, cold is free. Would you like me to book that because that's your favorite room? Or, you know, that that's how we've kind of built it as well to learn over time the preferences of the user that's actually there. So they're not having to go through the questions um, every time they, they want to book a meeting room. So uh, that was really important as well, that we didn't make it cumbersome uh, and that we didn't that we made it snappy and that we made it that you were able to do that. It's, it's, it's like a baby being born. that It, it learns those, uh, those things. Mm. How do you see, you mentioned Alexa for Business that, that will be rolling out uh, soon and, and what we'll do in a moment is we'll we'll kind of zoom out I know we've honed in quite kind of uh, focused on Uma we'll zoom out a little bit and talk about the industry in general and voice assistants kind of in the enterprise what what are you what are your thoughts in terms of Amazon for uh, Alexa for business and, and and that rolling out where where do you see that either fitting or is that kind of competition or what are your kind of thoughts on 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 the Alexa for business it's an area that I think we're keeping close to I actually like I said I would like to actually work with Amazon on, on on something like this because from what I've seen of a likes of a business and, and I've played with it um, quite intently in, in the US I mean it's not available in in the UK at the moment and we've 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 had a look at certain things like connecting it to video conferencing and you know we've done we've done some work with Amazon um, uh, and the, the whole Alexa for business uh, scenario I, I, I'd see it as a as a as a competitor uh, right now, but I, I, like I say, we want to actually work with the team to, to make it a really seamless experience. We've done it right now. You know, we've built that, that system. It took us two years. Um, and the biggest issue we had was the authentication for the user. Um, and from what I'm seeing with the, the Amazon for business at the moment, uh, certainly around booking the room, it's room specific, not user specific specific. So it would be difficult to actually tie the booking to a, to a specific user uh, by just talking to an electrician. Alexa outside the um, outside the room, whereas it's the opposite for us. It's actually tied to the user and about what that person's trying to achieve, not what the room's achieving. The room the room is again another peripheral in the process uh, of, of of getting to the user's crux of what they're trying to achieve. And I think yeah, there there's there's obviously some competition there, but I think for us we see Uma as something that's agnostic of platforms. It's not just about Alexa or Google Home. It's about creating a platform that's able to go across platforms, across devices, uh, across experiences that allows you to unify what you're trying to accomplish versus I can only use an Alexa, I can only use a Google Home, I can only use a Microsoft product. It's about yeah. being able to unify those things across those services. And so from that perspective, it's, it's not about competition for us. We For most enterprises, they're using Google, Microsoft, Alexa, Amazon, and a mixed bag already. So it's just providing that same experience for them where they're able to still use voice but not have to be completely locked down to one particular provider. Uh, and I think that's the solution we're trying to provide there. Mm. 
or, or a particular device either. I mean, it sounds from what you were saying in terms of building up the engine and then, you know, the, the interface then comes second to that once you've built the, the kind of core of it. So it sounds as though, you know, it's definitely, I think it could be, it could be complementary because you've got, you know, just Alexa is, is one or, or smart speakers are just one mode, aren't they? Whereas if Uma's on lots of different surfaces, then, you know, it's, it seems as though it's, uh, yeah, it seems as though I can play together. And if it's cross-platform, like you say, so you can be using an Alexa at home and then coming into the office and it have you have a, a different smart speaker in the room, uh, there's lots of things going on in that space in, in meeting room technologies now where, you know, AI is, is being built into products as they as they come from the likes of Cisco and Zoom and Google. They're all building those those technologies in there. So actually being able to integrate with all of those is is a big part of what we're trying to achieve. You know, reinventing the wheel isn't what, we're, what we want to do, but certainly complementing in the wheel is, is definitely what we're, we're, we're about at Amy Systems. Yeah, that's in, that's interesting. That let's 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 take a, a step back then. So we we know that that Uma is an enterprise voice assistant that's that's allowing people to, in the first instance, book meeting rooms, take actions within meetings, and, and then kind of wrap things up at the end by by circulating those actions out. You mentioned Stephen at the beginning that that voice hasn't necessarily taken off yet in the enterprise. So from your perspective in working in this and building this for the last two years, how would you summarize the current state of play when it comes to voice in the enterprise? Yeah, it's it's like I was saying. I think it's quite it's quite small at the moment. We're we're sort of seeing um, that organisations are are really security conscious. So they're seeing adding a voice application is normally a cloud based solution. So they're kind of fearful of having to just shoot all their services out into the cloud without having to you know do the the, the compliance that sits on those um, on those services. And I think one of the the main things for us is that you know voice and digital assistance uh, they're part of digital transformation and most enterprise organizations will have that digital uh, um, sort of transformation team in there um, so some of the barriers that we found when we've been working with enterprises uh, have, have been around the whole voice and digital assistant offering and how we can get them to interact with the services and that's where the fear is still there in enterprise at the moment it's it's quite small um, you know the, the, the amount everybody wants to do it right everybody is looking at voice and how they can bring voice because it is the way the trend is going in the market and you know i am part of uh, the voice 2 community uh, as a uk and it, you know you, you see everybody looking at ways of, of bringing voice into into their daily lives um so i think we're at the start of something with enterprise um you know, uh, there's always a, there's almost a fear as well that, that these assistants are going to come and take people's jobs. Um, you know, we were reading a, a number of things um, uh, over the last few years. Uh, the Marriott hotels, for instance, um, you know, de- deploying uh, digital assistants. They, you know, staff went on strike because they were fearful of it. Um, so for for me, it's about making sure we define those use cases in in enterprise and and and, and position it correctly. So those are the things we've we've been seeing really. Yeah, and to Steve's point, it's, you know, looking at the systems as a value add and a productivity add, and that it's not about taking jobs, it's about making your work more productive and not doing these mundane tasks over and over again that suck away from your, your brain power and your brain space. And I think uh, to point around just challenges from a user or voice a user experience perspective, there still are some challenges around practical things when you're talking about voice and enterprise or like email addresses. You know, when you're trying to do an experience where an email is required, do you ask someone to verbally spell out an email address every single time? Uh, Or in in those cases where we use a mixture of kind of visual cues, either an app or through Messenger to then do some of these prompts through cards. So those are still very real challenges of emails, um, actual names, you know, as you're living in a very diverse world with varying names, a lot of these platforms aren't as knowledgeable in terms of diverse names. And so that's also still a very, a, a, a real challenge for delivering only voice experiences for existence. And so if you're hoping to get someone's name right, but they have a, a, a non-traditional name or a, a name that's not traditional in terms of that particular country, then, you know, there's barriers there that, you know, obviously that you don't want to have staff who are, you know, they can't use the voice assistant because they can't you know, translate their name correctly. And so those are things that 
we still, you're still a nut to crack in terms of figuring out those kind of problems. Uh, and, the, and a lot of times it may require a mixed uh, experience of text and voice to accomplish those tasks. But I think that's where we're working aggressively to kind of figure out what are great ex- user experience solutions to solve these types of problems. Uh, how do you, how do you how have you dealt with that with Uma then? Because that's a really good point. That like I think that names and email addresses it's the same as almost trying to tell it your your actual physical address and postcodes and numbers and stuff like that. It's like I can imagine that being a challenge, but I can imagine it being really important because I don't want to book a meeting room just for me. You know, inevitably there's going to be at least one other person there. Um, so in terms of kind of putting together you know an attendee list and possibly even circulating the invite out to those attendees then getting names and email addresses seems to be something that is really important so how how have you kind of approached that problem with with uma we've come up with some really clever solutions uh, in terms of kind of mixing voice with visual cards um, like little things around you know, adding another employee to a meeting room uh, using shortcuts of the bot can read out the emails and then you're able to kind of kind of option one, option two, option three. Uh, and so those are ways where you can, instead of having the actual uh, user read back out an email address, they're just selecting from a, a list of emails prompted by kind of voice options so option one, two or three. There's other kind of clever ways where we can also use, because we're integrating with the business service, we can automate some of these things as well. So if I know that, you know, I'm booking a meeting or we want to send the meeting notes from a meeting that just concluded, we can identify the attendees from Office 365 so the end user doesn't have to read out email addresses for where the the follow-up email should be sent to. So I think we kind of use a mixture of our our UMA service and platform to fill the gap in some of those areas, but also we come up with some kind of clever voice uh, adaptations to kind of fill in the gap of, you know, asking for names and email addresses where those things tend to be really challenging. Yeah, because it's reading the service that you're that, that you're using, you know, at home, um, my uh, son is, is consistently asking uh, our, you know what device because I don't want it to go off behind me um, to, to sing songs and do all kinds of things and it doesn't pick up half of what he says because he's five so what, what what we've done there is we've kind of when we're looking at email addresses you know maybe two or three times that you, you would have a go using voice but then it comes back and gives you options of selecting who you want to actually add in there like Marcus was saying with a card or by you know spelling it out via text um, if it's getting it nearly 90% of the way then it, it will just come up and say I think you're trying to say this person is this the case and you'd be just like yes that's right um, so it's just those alternative ways to tackling how how voice is, um, is still having those little nuances with um, hyphenated names and you know um, and, and things like that yeah, and there's just there's some things that are just practical where depending on your business, you could have loud spaces or you could actually have a machine shop and voice is just not feasible. And so I think that's where the goal for Uma was to allow for it to work across different platforms and form factors that depending on the use cases, there was there's always a solution that was viable for interacting with the assistant. Hmm. And then just before then, um, when we were talking about the the state of play in in voice or well, state of play for voice in the enterprise and you were saying that around the use the Marriott example of, of people you know not being too happy about this assistant potentially taking the jobs I'm pretty sure I read somewhere that, that they were kind of going on strike I think. yeah no they, they were yeah they were kind of yeah. fearful of the fact that it was going to take their jobs yeah so when when you're actually kind of speaking to potential clients and, and you're, you're kind of doing the the work with Uma what who is it? Is is it the people who you're? Because obviously, the people who you're most likely going to be dealing with are not going to be necessarily unless you're doing research. The the, the receptionists, so to speak. I'm assuming that you you'll be selling to a lot more senior people. So, is it? Do they have the same concerns? Do do the, do the senior kind of budget holders are, are they still kind of feeling a little bit cautious about voice? Um, not not particularly cautious in that respect. I think you know what 
the Marriott was trying to do was was completely different. But I think you know where they're concerned. Uh, you know, I mean, stripping it back, I think artificial intelligence has been around since the 1950s. We've all sort of had it in our in our um, in our lives. It's just that these use cases uh, for some of the menial tasks that are out there. Um, can be taken on by systems. So what we sort of see it as is we allow humans to then become custodians of those systems and, and actually move on to do creative work. Uh, and, that, and I think that's what we, we when we talk to, to, to sort of CTOs, CIOs of organizations and, 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 and in that, that, that sort of level, um, you know, we work with facilities uh, management companies because they can redeploy um, their their teams to create a much better ROI for their their facilities uh, management teams uh, by putting in digital assistance, so they've not got somebody walking around checking that the rooms are are available now. Most enterprise organizations will have a room booking system of some kind um, within within their organization, so that's why we again we've made it work natively with O three six five and Google, not the actual end system that the person uses. Um, so we kind of, you know, we, we see, um, like I say, lots of fear around, more around, not necessarily we're going to lose our job, but like I say, more about, you know, shadow IT bringing their own devices to work. We see people worried about that happening uh, in, in the organization. Uh, so, you know, employees having their own uh, digital assistants at home they want to see it happen in the in in the workplace they kind of do their own thing with a and if this then that and start making things connect together um that's where they they get worried they think that we're going to be opening out um their their services to people but we kind of control that and we lock it into certain areas where so it only sees certain parts of the business yeah and i think there's two points here one i know there is you know one use case that we've we'll worked through with uh, round was like forget password. And so using Uma as kind of a support mechanism. And so this particular enterprise, you know, about 50 to 40% of their support ticketing was around just forgot password. So you're, you're, so I would want that taken off my plate. If I'm the IT manager and I'm resetting passwords all day, I actually rather be doing something else. And I think that's where it's, it's about productivity and figuring out how these assistants can deliver on tasks that just, are mundane and just unproductive, but also there, someone needs to be able to manage that platform, even manage Uma in terms of, you know, let's see what new intents are, you know, what are people asking? And so having um, people within the enterprise that could be trained on Uma or any digital assistant is going to be critical for the future of business of being able to understand when the assistant needs to be improved or if there's intents being asked of it that aren't being addressed by the digital assistant, you know, someone has to go in and, uh, you know, add those new intents or add additional learning to make sure that the, that digital assistant is still being productive. And so, yeah, it will impact people's role, but it impacted in a positive way if used correctly. Mm. So what you're saying there, it sounds as though, so is there kind of some kind of reporting element to UMA then where people can do things like monitor, you know, occupancy levels and, and try and figure out what people are trying to book? So yeah, through the assisting, we're able to look at utilization through booking uh, through the bot. So you're able to see, you know, how many rooms are booked through UMA. Uh, what's the utilization rate of uh, those rooms that were booked? So were they 80% used throughout the mm. week? 90% used or 10% used. Uh, and then how often were they left unused or did people miss their actual meeting time? So being able to provide that kind of insight through UMA is also an area that we think is going to be really productive as well as just seeing trends. So if the enterprise is able to see that people go on the UMA and request you know meetings every day at three o'clock at a certain location, maybe they know there's a need to expand capacity. So there's an idea that you know this... UMA can also provide some new insights and particularly how people are interacting with business services and also interacting with the physical space within that enterprise. Yeah, and that's that's something that we've we we've kind of really wanted to focus on too. Is about that ROI and saying, you know, these are the meeting rooms that are you, you're only at sixty percent capacity. You know, if somebody says, well, we're going to get a new building, and I think we need to, I think we need another twenty meeting rooms. Well, actually, we can drill into that back end system and and pull analytics out 
um, based on you know information that's that's come through the through the system, uh, and also you know we've built in a, a mechanism for feedback as well. So actually, as users develop this assistant, it starts off on a journey of a of a meeting room booking system that allows you to talk to the room and and take notes. But it actually you know allows users to to feed back and say, hey, can we have this? Can we do that? And, you know, what it does is for those custodians of the, the AI in the back end, it lets them say, well, actually, we're seeing lots of requests for, you know, people. Uh, one of the big things that came into an organization we were talking about the other day, uh, when somebody wants to book a holiday, uh, you have to log into the human resource system. You have to approve it. You have to check that there's nobody else off on that day. You know, one of our guys turned around and said, well, wouldn't it be fantastic if I could just turn around and say, hey, Uma, how many days holiday has Brett got left? And it comes back and says he's got three days holiday. And you say, can he have the 25th of November off? Uh, there's two people off on that day. So it's ideally not good based on capacity. So we're kind of then saying, well, okay, I'll, I'll approve him booking that holiday. And it then just approves the holiday booking. Um, it would streamline people having to log into systems and keep looking at and cross-referencing. And those features are built into Uma as well, where you can actually feed back to the organization and say, these are what our people are asking for on voice. They're asking to be able to talk about booking holidays. They're asking about being able to book hotels, flights, as if they're talking to somebody. Would that be something that the company that uses Uma would need to be monitoring and then kind of tell you about or would that be something that you'll be monitoring and using that to improve the product a mixture of both so whenever you take Uma, you'll be given a, a portal that allows you to log in uh, a little bit of like a little bit of like the alexa app where you can kind of configure skills and see you know the intents that are coming through we'll do that for, for an organization as well we'll give them a very um, you know user focused portal that will allow you to very quickly even also add some basic intents as well so we're actually going to let users um you know maybe bring in 20 or 30 of their own questions that they want you know faqs and things like that that they can bring it and make it you know be a voice uh, related question um so there's big, there's gonna be a bit of both anything deep rooted that requires you know some some of the guys in marcus's team to really code in the the services we'll we'll do that as a partnership with them as part of their their subscription um but we will give people the ability to um to do some basic administration of their own uh, by adding things into there as well yeah and the the other part of that too is since uma's a license there's there's a few things that because we're integrating business services, these services change and they change pretty often. And so being able to provide that support on an ongoing basis to know that Uma is going to work when Azure is updated and there's new APIs and, and things like that is that what is kind of offered through the license to make sure your Uma assistant staying up to date. But then the other part is also being able to have your own view into the insights of Uma so that the business can learn what the needs are of their staff. And so they will see trends. So if they see a spike in questions around holiday, maybe it also helps reinforce the business of maybe we should send a staff wide email uh, clarifying holidays for holiday schedule or holiday time off. So it's just, it's another way that as an enterprise, they get insights from learning about questions from an anonymous way of what the concerns are or trends just from the activity of their employees and how they're interacting with the bot. So it sounds it sounds then I mean we started off this conversation talking about Uma is is an assistant that will book meeting rooms and, and take notes throughout the meeting and then wrap up the meetings by circulating actions but it seems as though now we've kind of got to the point where on the one hand Marcus you, you know you're saying that the Uma can potentially the insights you can get from Uma can inform almost your internal communications as well as giving you ideas of, of new areas of development and Stephen you mentioned there that you, you could use it for um, you know checking how many days holiday uh, Bob's got and then booking holidays so it, it doesn't sound as though Uma's going to be staying purely as a meeting room booking system for very long no i mean we've just given you our roadmap that's great uh, but no we, it's, um, it's, no it's um it's not no it's a, it's got a huge development path on it and you know we're already working with salesforce um you know for um incident management and using voice to um to, to help first line support our um 
our Uma uh, for Salesforce application is out there and um, it's in the iOS store and works today with with Salesforce and it's currently been um, it's going through the process of becoming a an actual Salesforce vetted uh, application too. So th there's a huge amount of uh, different variants of Uma that are going to be coming to market soon and eventually they all stitch together. So you buy one subscription for Uma book, you may want to add another one on and it just seamlessly will connect. So yeah, it, it's kind of you, you know we started off with with the one product it's it's available uh, as of as of next week and um it's in beta at the moment um but there are others in the background that are very quickly going to launch after that launch date so we, we, we've kind of you know um made it so that they can all um launch you know in, in, over the next six months yeah and uma book was really the focus of delivering something that's digestible and easy to deploy and easy to solve a really clear problem for enterprises but uma the uma engine as a whole is a, a utility and so at the end of the day it's it's built to be able to handle business services and to connect that to the right intents and that can be deployed in a variety of different ways from support to frontline sales to, you know, there's the possibilities are endless, uh, but for the purpose of making it easy for adoption, the, the, the idea is deploying versions of UMAs to, to address specific uh, issues and pain points. Uh, but if you're looking for the whole integration of multiple services that can be delivered as well, but the idea is that there's predefined versions of UMA that are predefined to address certain issues and problems. Hmm. So what 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 about? I mean, we we spoke a little bit about the future in terms of you know, what you you're planning on doing in terms of you know scaling Uma and, and kind of iterating on it and and growing it as as it kind of uh, as it enters the sort of marketplace. What other stuff see that happening in the future and, and and what's what have you got planned over the next say twelve months? So we are going to be, uh, like I say, I've, I've touched on some of them there. We're going to be um, really making this a true digital assistant. So, um, you know, we're going to be allowing for the Uma book product to expand into, like I say, it's got desk booking as well, for desking. Um, we're going to be going into um, yeah, HR, uh, allowing you to you know, integrate into HR systems, uh, first line support. Uh, the big one for us is actually... Um, using the, the, the telephone and, and ringing Uma as if it's a, a contact in your phone. Uh, that's going to be coming out in the next sort of t in, in the next 12 months. Um, we are currently looking at talking to a number of manufacturers about creating the Uma OS, which sits on top of a, um, a smart speaker. So uh, that's, um, you know, certain things. So we've, we've got a big, um, you know, the, 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 the remember those conversations we had um, a year ago where we was out, hey, wouldn't it be great if we could do this? Wouldn't it be great if we can do that? We kind of put them into play now. Um, so I could be sat at home. And I could, um, you know, finish off by saying, you know, uh, to my to my device, I'd like to book a flight for tomorrow, please. And it's linked up to my um, to my corporate booking account. It books me the flight to. Uh, I have an office in Belfast. It knows uh, and learns that I always get the eight oh five flight. Books that flight for me, and it it's all done. Uh, and then again, it comes back and prompts me for a hotel. Uh, yes, I'd like a hotel. Brings me up the top three that are in the area within my budget within the organisation. Uh, I books me that. Um, I book meeting spaces. Uh, we're just trying to get to the point where we can, you know, um, bring enterprise level what you're doing your day as if you're talking to someone because not everybody can afford uh, a PA, right? But they can afford a, a license that helps them get all those services pulled together, and that that that's ultimately what we're we're trying to achieve, uh, and bringing voice to the centre of it. Um, um, so that's that's kind of the roadmap for for us. Uh, lots of services that we're going to add on, but productize them in their own right. So people may not need the HR piece, so they just take the booking piece. They may not need the the flight booking, so they just take the HR piece. So we're kind of doing it in a modular way for people. Mm. And you you're going to be putting on a series of events over the next over the next year or so. Yeah, every quarter we're going to aim to um, have soft launch events uh, every quarter with a, a new functionality. I think the good thing about 
what we're doing with Uma is as well as we develop the the platform, the you know the new things that come, um, based on feedback from users as well, uh, we'll just roll out as part of the licensing fee. Um, so we'll manage all of those, and every quarter we're going to do a a series of events that actually talk about how voice is growing within the um, within the enterprise, uh, pulling uh, information from Amazon, from Google, uh, and and trying to work with those on how we can make it a lot more. Um, you know, a lot more sustainable for, for, for enterprises to, to, to really grab voice and, and run with it and, and not, you know, not be fearful of it, not be worrying that someone's going to bring a, an Alexa into their office and sit on the desk and try and make it work in, in that area. We're going to really sort of focus on, you know, making that happen for, for, for organizations. And starting on Wednesday the 28th at Madfest. I know we touched on it a little bit at the beginning, but do you want to tell us a little bit more about Madfest and, and what's going on? Yeah, so on the 28th, Madfest, we are using uh, Madfest as a, we're a launch partner at Madfest, so we're actually launching Uma Book on the day. Um, so you can actually uh, contact myself um, or Kane via Twitter. Uh, our, um, uh, we've got some tickets available if you still want to come along uh, and, and have a look at the product in, in action and also to have a discussion around voice uh, and where we see voice going, uh, which expands a little bit on this this podcast. Um, we we are hosting a number of um, demos throughout the day in our lounge area. So again, we'd, we would we would welcome you to come along and have a have a look at that. It's um, day one product launch, so we're we're really excited about it. You know, everything's geared up to this day for us to to do that, and we're 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 also looking at um, signing on the day. Um, channel partners that want to work with us on actually, you know, taking the product out to out to market as well. Fantastic. And so there you go, boys and girls. You can get in touch with, I'll put the links in the show notes to, to uh, Stephen's contact details. Uh, and you can contact us on Twitter if you would like to go to Madfest and see the launch of Uma, as well as the panel discussion with uh, lots of interesting folks who you'll be familiar with through listening to the podcast. Um, we'll, yeah, we'll do that. So just get in touch with us and, and we'll, we'll sort that out. Stephen, where else can people uh, follow the progress of Uma and, and reach out to you guys and, and uh, find out a little bit more? Yep. So you can follow us on any of the social sites. So you can follow myself on LinkedIn um, just by searching for my, my name. There's Marcus as well, but you can also go to amysystems.com forward slash Uma book. Uh, that is our uh, our website and you'll see news, uh, videos um, and events coming up on there. Um, as well as the events that we're going to be holding in person, we're going to be doing a series of um, uh, webinars on uh, the development of the product itself. So as we um, as we sort of move forward with any releases of the product, we're gonna we're gonna basically um, uh, see that um, see that see that progress. So yeah, we'll we'll provide all sort of Twitter handles, LinkedIn handles, but it's all just under my name. And Uma Book is on Twitter as um, uh, amysystems.com. Uh, so you can you can see us on there. Fantastic. Stephen, Marcus, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us and looking forward to seeing you and meeting you in person on Wednesday. Yeah, me too. Yep. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Kerry. That was Stephen Milner and Marcus Finley of Amy Systems talking about Uma, their enterprise voice assistant. I do think that they've captured a really unique position in, in the market with the launch of Uma because so much is spoken about voice from the consumer side you know games for kids and we've had that on recently with the bbc and we've had lots of stuff on uh, around designing for old people and and designing skills and, and all of the kind of consumer facing stuff which is where all all the action's happening 100 percent. but it does feel as though there is this this huge amount of potential sitting within the enterprise and we touched on it with sean canungo uh, of silver a few weeks back and it seems as though uh, the the chaps at amy systems with uma are really set to, to capitalise on that so do get yourself along on Wednesday if you can as Stephen said at the end there you can get in touch with Stephen on Twitter or you can DM myself at Kane Sims or at VUX World if you want to come along the tickets are about 600 quid they're supposed to be so they have given us a couple of tickets to give to our listeners so do try and pop along I think that uh, voice in the enterprise in terms of you know saving time creating efficiencies making things a bit more seamless and, and friction free is 100% where it's at because we're not paying people to sit around you know 
wasting time basically um, the amount of emails people send these days is unbelievable I can't believe that people just sit there and type emails just to send them off I mean there's so much efficiency and so much time wasted at work uh, on non-productive stuff that Amy and uh, Uma this is this is the very beginning uh, of voice revolutionizing the enterprise in my opinion uh, thank you Stephen for joining us and thank you Marcus as well looking forward to meeting you on Wednesday and I'm looking forward as well for you out there the listeners who are listening to this hopefully a few of you can pop along as well It'll be interesting and, and really good to meet you so thank you Stephen thank you Marcus and thank you all for listening until next time see you later